Good morning. Hello. Welcome to our regular Saturday Live. It's uh, lovely to be here again. Another, another lovely sunny day. So it's really nice to um, see everybody. Oh, hold on. Oh, blimey, it's come up a bit quicker on my screen today. Might actually be um, live. So let me know if you're there. Come and say hello um, and uh, give me a thumbs up or a like so I know you're there. I'll carry on talking anyway, I always do. So, but it is nice to know that uh, that you're there. Um, let me just get my um, screen up so I can see. Oh, look, we're there already today. That's good. That was quicker than, I'm getting quicker at this every week. Yeah. I am getting better, I am getting better. So yeah, so good morning everybody and welcome to our regular Saturday Live and our little catch up um, so we can find out what we've all been doing this week. Uh, we've all been really busy sewing. Let me look, what have we been doing this week? We've been, uh, well, we've, we've just finished our final scrubs order so that was good. So we'll wait and see if anyone needs any more and that's been great. We've had some lovely uh, happy people with those and it is nice like everyone's been saying. It's nice to, to do a little bit to help isn't it? It's always nice to, to feel like we're doing something. Uh, I've been um, working on a face cover video because uh, it looks like we're going to have to be we're going to be uh, asked to wear them, and I was asked to do one for um, a newsletter magazine type thing. So we'll be filming that later. So there'll be a, mar a face cover video coming up. My sort of tips on doing that and my um, uh, things that I've picked up while I've been doing them. Uh, what else have we been doing? We've been working on filming our sample portfolio uh, workshops for our online courses. Oh, so Pat is here. Hello, Pat. Oh, hi, Pat. And Sally Camp. Oh, morning, Sally. And Sally Scott. Oh, Karen's here. Morning, Karen. And Justine and Margaret. Oh, look, I can see. Oh, bloody, I'm behind with my hellos. You Sorry. are. Let me catch up. Susan, morning, Susan. Uh, and Janet. Good morning, Janet. Margaret loves your top. Oh, thank you very much. So this top, let me turn my top. This is... Um, Janet the, and Jilly. Um, yeah, Mon, oh, Mon and Jilly. Oh, Jilly got her order. Jilly ordered some little scissors and needles this week. We've got those. That's good. Uh, this is the Tasuti Tokyo jacket. So it's like a little kimono. Step up a bit. You can sort of see it's got pockets. Uh, uh, it's a really nice pattern. I did it as a workshop a year or so ago. And the fabric is from Bloomsbury Square. Morning, Jane and Catherine. Morning, Catherine. Hi. Uh, nice to see you. Um, yeah, Amy's behind the camera, so she'll, yeah. be, she'll, she will, <laughs> she will come, come and let us know what, you, what she's been up to this week. She's been very busy as well. Um, yeah, this is a fabric from Blue Shoes, but I think it's an art gallery one. But uh, It uh, is a uh, McElroy, McElroy, Lady McElroy. Lady McElroy. So, so it's yeah. currently no longer available. But Oh, okay. There'll be similar ones anyway. Yeah. It's just a cotton, but it's a nice one. And I actually underlined it in a brim silk lining so that it gave it a bit more body. Oh. It's a nice pattern, the Tasuti Tokyo jacket. Mm. Hi Emma, nice to see you. And Angela is also here. Morning Angela. Oh how lovely, lots of people to say hello to. So yeah, so we've been working on our sample portfolio workshops and sample portfolio uh, is something that we do in Midhurst at the sewing room. Every Monday afternoon I do a little techniques class where you can practice things like zips or collars or pockets. So I've been working on a, uh, an online version of that. Uh, so we'll I've been working on it <laughs> so we'll get up some of that filmed this week so there'll be some technique videos that you can buy online uh, and there'll be some little pattern pieces you can download to practice things it's always good to practice samples of your um, techniques before you do them on your garment particularly things like pockets where you're going to be cutting a big hole in your fabric so it's always good to practice things first so and we build up I tend to build up a file of all the techniques so you've always got that reference it's your own reference book so we've been doing that as well this week. I've been working on my couture jacket for the, the online course for couture and there's lots of little bits of Linton tweed everywhere. It's like snow here. Uh, Janet, um, uh, will this be on YouTube le later? Yes, it'll be, it stays on this, this page. So if you can't watch it now uh, live, you can watch it later. It's all, it stays on all our lives. You'll see them down the feed. On uh, Facebook. Uh, on Facebook, yeah, on the Facebook feed. And we will be transferring them onto YouTube at some point when we get round to it, so they'll all be there as well. But yeah, this one will stay on the Facebook page. Um... Oh, hi, Sue. Oh, hi, Sue. How are you? Nice to see you. I saw your little dog that you made this week. So Sue makes um, the Luna Lapan uh, rabbits and the clothes for them, and she's just made a little dog as well, which is very cute. Oh, Janet said she placed an order yesterday. Yes, she did. Yes, and I'm going up to Midhurst this afternoon to get all the bits and pieces, so that will go in the post later. So I tend to go up to Midhurst uh, at least once a week, um, 
to uh, fill, fulfill orders uh, and also for ladies who are making scrubs we swap over the scrubs and get them out to people as well so we'll do that this afternoon Janet so you'll get your order soon hi Wendy hi Wendy Woo <laughs> nice to see you um uh oh. so Cara I'm going to I'm going up to Midhurst this afternoon uh, and so I'll dispatch on Monday and then I'll probably go up again on uh, Thursday next week so I tend to go up once or twice a week depending on how many orders come in so uh, I have got quite a lot of haberdashery here so things like interfacings and things like that I've got quite a lot here so um um, yes, you can yes. place an order now, Karen, and then I'll I'll take it with me this afternoon and get it fulfilled straight away. No problem. I can do that for you. I've got quite a few to do this afternoon, which is lovely. Thank you very much, everybody, for your support. Um, so, yeah, Couture Jacket is going along nicely, apart from the floor being covered in Linton. <laughs> uh, but that's fine. <laughs> Anyone who's worked with Linton will know that's a common problem. Um, what else have we been doing this week? Uh, yeah, so we're just sort of we're just sort of making more plans. What have you all been up to? Uh, I've seen some lovely things being made uh, on the on the Midhurst Sewers page. There's been again some lovely children's clothes being made and um, lovely uh, Kelly Anorak pictures. Oh, Catherine's going to place an order as well. Oh, thank you, Catherine. That's great. Blazer Toile is coming along. Oh, great. Yeah, Catherine's making the blazer. Um, uh, so that's that's great. If you need any help with fitting tips on that, I did a fitting tip with Sally earlier this week on her blazer. Um, just a few things I can help you with. Uh, oh, you're talking about the blazer. Uh, I'd like to thank um, Frances the Makes Atelier very much this week for putting my workshops in her newsletter. So one of the blazers that I do on the online workshop is the Makers Atelier blazer, which I don't know if you can see, it's, it's in the corner over there. Um, so I do a few different use a few different patterns um uh, oh justin's been making a, a a tea dress it's nice to have something complicated to work on though isn't it justin keeps you going doesn't it and and uh, i see sally's um sally's working on her blazer good 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 i'll send you that extra i sent that extra canvas for you yesterday sally so you should get that today on monday what's margaret three twirls with your pietra pants I'm looking forward to seeing these <laughs> toilets, these uh, Pietra plants, Margaret. I've, we've got the pattern. I really want to make them. Oh, yes. I'd like to see those. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Emma uh, made a sweatshirt, sweatshirt and lots of masks. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Janet would like to add a few things to the order. Oh, if you email me, Janet, because I can always add things to the order um, uh, and I can send you a PayPal invoice or, yeah, just let me know. We can sort that out for you. <laughs> I was planning to leave about two o'clock, but maybe I'll leave a bit later. <laughs> All these orders coming. Mind, I always take my laptop with me, so that's not a problem. So that's okay. Um, what else has everyone been making? Oh, Margaret says they come up big games, so definitely, oh, definitely need to make a toile okay. for those. Definitely a toile. Then. Yeah. Is that the um, closet case ones? The Pietro Yeah. Has? Is that the one that comes? Yeah, it comes with a skirt, I think. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I want to make the. Um, I think it's the. Fiore skirt, the wrap skirt with one pocket. That's oh, the other yeah. one I want to make a closet case. They recommended that for the sewing bee. They did, that's why I thought I'd make it. I was hoping to get that made this week, but I've been quite busy this week. I don't know. It seems like five minutes ago we were here. It's, it's good these weeks are going quickly, I think. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we've been doing that. Hi, Julia. How's your scrub making going? I know you've been making lots of scrubs as well. Oh, Victoria's sent lots of fabrics out for Plateau pants. <laughs> oh, yes. Hi, Victoria. How are you this morning? Yeah, there's been... I think cause Amy did the Palazzo pants with her pattern. That was really good. Um, yeah, so, yeah, just a little... Do you want to pass me my mask games? And I'll um, just... I can show you the mask that I've been working on. I've done, I did a couple of samples. Um, yeah, I did a couple of samples. I made a pattern. So just to a quick chat, one of the things, um, yes, you could use wadding. I've used um, a non-woven, this is my little mask here, uh, that I've made. It's got a pocket on the back, so you could put an extra layer in. Um, and I have used a non-woven interfacing. So I've used the very lightweight, I've used the very lightweight interfacing on the front of the mask, and you could line the pocket bit on the back. Um, uh, so that's what I've been working on, but I've either used a very ultra lightweight interfacing, which is not fusible, or you could use the stretch interfacing, which is also very lightweight, but again, it's not woven. So that's the, the idea is that you don't want to woven, but it keeps it quite comfortable to wear. And I've done elastic on the sides, but you could put bias binding straps to go in uh, to hold it. And 
with the elastic that little thing I made last week with the buttons you could put on the back so yeah so I'll be filming that later I've just done it for a, um, a newsletter feature for um, that's the little button bit that goes on the back that I made last week so yeah we'll be filming all that later that's my one that I practiced with with the nice fabric on it but it's a bit stiff that fabric so yeah I've been playing about with that this week so we'll we'll do a video of uh, face face covers there um what else have I got? yeah Julia's saying it'd be nice to make something um for herself it will be yes it's nice to do that isn't it uh, and Sally's building a summer wardrobe um the interlining uh, oh yes you could use the interliner that you hate <laughs> Wendy that's a it's a bit thicker and fluffy but uh, yeah it would work it's not woven so that would work as well so you've got I know you've got some of that haven't you so yeah that one that there's one interface in that Wendy doesn't like because it gums up her uh, rotary cutter blade so <laughs> um Sally's making the um the Picasso pants <laughs> the Palazzo pants from uh, the sewing bee um Amy had a, Amy's got a nice pattern, the simplicity pattern, which is very good. Yeah, triple eight five. Yeah, triple eight five. That's a lovely one. Oh, Emma's um, asking, is the interfacing for extra filtering? Yes, it is. It is. It just because the when you're using a woven fabric to make the, the face covers, so obviously there's little holes into anything that can help fill up the um, uh, the holes in the fabric. But also with this pattern that I'm, I've done here, you could fold up some kitchen roll or a coffee filter and put that inside as well. So it gives you an option to put something else in. Um, as well so yeah so that's uh, quite a helpful thing so as long as you take that all out and wash them at 60 degrees after every wearing and wash your hands mm -hmm. everyone's saying um yeah but the interfacing and non-woven you know i love my woven interfacing for dressmaking but non-woven interfacing for making these face covers is definitely worth using so if you've got any of that stuff that we don't like using in our in our clothes you could use it in your face coverings um uh so Oh, <laughs> Julia, are you leaning on your keyboard? <laughs> um, yeah, that is. It's good to be able to put a little bit of interfacing in in the back there. I'm going to try some with. I'm going to try some with bias binding straps and also maybe strips of jersey fabric, like t-shirt fabric. Then you can just tie that around the back as well. If you you know the elastic can be a bit uncomfortable, even with the ear covers. So. Um, yeah, don't make them too thick. Um, well, they go soggy. <laughs> they would I go... imagine they'd be really sweaty in there. Mm -hmm. Really sweaty. Yeah, you don't want to wear them too long. I think it's only for when you're going somewhere where you can't social distance, isn't it? So sometimes when you go into shops, although they've got all the um, the markers on the floor and everything, every now and then you can't help but get a bit too close. So, morning, Claire. Um, what have you finished? Uh, a ten-year-old quilt. That's great. It's really good to have time to finish all these things, isn't it? I'm trying to go through, I know we're trying to use our stashes up, but also to finish some um, unfinished garments. Um, yes, I have got the elastic, Margaret. I've got white and black in six mil, and I've just ordered some more white as well. I've also got the round um, hat elastic, you know, the round elastic, if you didn't want the flat one. So yes, I have. Morning, Maggie, how are you? Have you started your couture jacket yet? <laughs> um, yes, I've got the elastic as well. What else have you all been doing? Um, oh yes, Nicola Lace is very nice. I don't know, there's probably got quite a lot of holes in it, but if you put something underneath it, warning Justine, by the way, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, you could use lace. We saw, who is it, Christian Sierra? Oh, he's a beautiful, he's embellished yeah. them with pearls and beads. Yes, out in America, Christian Sierra, who does beautiful evening red carpet evening gowns. He's been making masks for, the, for their health health practitioners over there but he has done some very beautiful ones with sequins and beads and things just some couture ones morning oh, Barbara. Hi, Barbara how are you it is a lovely day isn't it um oh yeah emma says elastic hair bands work too oh yes that would work it is about finding things that you've got at home really as well and I, we were just talking this morning about how you because i've got the pocket here you could put um a piece of wire um in here to a piece of wire in the top here so that you could make it fit closely around your nose and I was playing about with strips of tin foil but it doesn't it does help a little bit but we've decided what we might try is you know the little ties you get for tying up food bags that might work you could put those in and then stitch a little box around them maybe put a piece of interfacing on each side so it's a bit softer um so yeah so there's lots of options but we've just got to all look after each other haven't we so if you've got any ideas let me know as well 
I like this shape it fits really nicely onto your face anyway so um, and we can make some really fancy ones let's see some pictures of some fancy ones if you're gonna have to wear these things it's gonna have to do a video yeah we'll do a video later do some fancy ones um, oh what Sally's got halfway through week two of blazer oh, oh but it's Maggie Maggie's doing couture jacket oh. Um, Oh, pipe cleaners. Very oh, good idea. Yeah, pipe cleaners. Good idea. That's a very good idea, Margaret. I was trying to think of something I had around the house, oh, but yeah. I'm sure you could get those quite easily. Amazon. Um, yeah, yeah, Amazon. Or um, any other stationery shops. <laughs> <laughs> other stationery suppliers are available. <laughs> um, yeah, what else is this? Yeah, I like the idea of pipe cleaners because they are padded, so they'd be much yeah. more comfortable. And if you can do them so you can take those out or I should presume they're washable as well but anyway they're quite quick to make um so so yeah let me think I've been looking I've been keeping up to date with what's going on in the sewing, sewing world and uh what's new out there um oh Liberty Silk ones for £25 <gasps> lovely outrageous. I don't think we should be selling them no <laughs> not, not just to cover costs just to cover costs <laughs> um but oh yes yeah, be nice to make some out of silk I might try that later as long as they've got that interfacing on the back and they've got I've used cotton lawn to line them so it's comfortable oh yeah let's try some silk ones later that would be fun um yes yeah, so I've been keeping up with what's going on in the sewing world and um what's I've been finding out is that um oh do you know me if you're looking for a new sewing machine do you know me have uh, got their normal spring sale on and do you know me sewing machines are so they're the same price whatever you buy them and uh, they always try and keep their prices the same so all retailers sell at the same price and they have their special offer at the moment so lots of their machines are on special you do get um some uh some companies that do lots of uh, extras as well things like free thread and things like that but yeah the special offer the may special offer i think they call it their spring sale or something um you often it's a good time to upgrade if you want to do that um margaret has made bias strips yeah i quite like the idea of um bias strips um instead of elastic i'm going to try that later on my other ones so yeah so that's if you're looking for a new sewing machine uh if you are looking to upgrade your sewing machine just a couple of things i would always say go for something with a one-step buttonhole um being able to move your needle left and right uh, and the option for your needle to stop down in the fabric every time you stop so those three things i find really useful when we're sewing so if you are thinking about upgrading if you want any advice on machines just email me i'm always happy to help um the one we use which is this um Janani one has got the thread cutter which i always thought I wouldn't use <laughs> but now I've got it I really like it mm -hmm. uh, apart from in um, couture sewing we don't use it in couture um, oh yeah Margaret put a picture yeah put pictures up of what you're doing um, face covers and things on the Midhurst Sewers page so we can see what everyone's making get some inspiration it's not the most glamorous of garment um, so um, uh, yeah so let's make let's make some pretty ones as well we could put sequins and beads on most because still water 60 degrees mind you um, yeah, the thread cutter is very useful, especially when you're doing things, when we've been doing things like um, making lots of things the same, like masks and scrubs and things, having a thread cutter makes a... <laughs> Victoria, yes, buy an embroidery machine! <gasps> we've been talking about that for a long time, Victoria. You know you want one. <laughs> <laughs> I might, my, my embroidery machine's up at Midhurst, actually, I might have to bring it back. Um, we normally use that on, the, on jeans, pockets and things like that. So, did you watch the sewing bee this week, everybody? What did you think of that? There was uh, some nice. I thought there were some nice garments. <laughs> there were some nice garments made this week. Um, what would we have? We had um, some. We had the palazzo pants, which I love. A pair of palazzo pants. I quite like the McCall's pattern, which has got no side seams. We did that in velvet just before Christmas. It was a nice. I'll have to look the pattern number up and um, uh, send it to you, <laughs> Jilly's after me. I, I tell you, my my embroidery machine I got from um, Create and Craft TV. Every now and then, I, know, I don't normally, honestly, I don't normally watch Great Craft TV. Um, oh, Victoria might be nipping into Maybe my... I've been borrowing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't normally watch things like Create and Craft, but um, uh, when they have a sewing machine offer on, it's well worth it. And you can, I think you subscribe to them uh, and then you get quite a good deal on their machine. So I did buy my embroidery machine from Create and Craft. Um, oh, Sally's had an order for a the winning shirt yeah there were some nice shirts <clears throat> weren't they um 
I like the pants too much Lady McCall effect there. There was quite a lot of Lady McCall. Mm. There. there was one fabric I thought was a Till the Sun Goes Down pattern. Unfortunately, the lady didn't make a very good job of her palazzo pants, the pale blue with the flower. I think that was a Till the Sun Goes Down, which actually is a lovely fabric. But I didn't... Um... Uh, Julia, really good one is Simplicity 8885. Mm. Really good palazzo pant pattern. Yeah, that's a very good one. Amy's made several pairs Loads, of Loads, yeah. Yeah, or the McCall's one without the side seams, but then you can't have pockets, so it's not quite so good. Um, yeah, I liked the I liked the palazzo pants, and I also liked the um, uh, the shirts. I thought the shirts they did really well with the shirts. There weren't enough techniques shown, were there? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Janet's saying lovely muscles. There were some quite nice. <laughs> there were some quite nice models, weren't there? Yeah. Um, and it is nice. I think it's a really, I love making shirts. I have to say, it's one of my favourite things. I really like uh, all the techniques in shirt making. And you can see on my YouTube channel, I've got the uh, um, technique for doing a pulled corner to get really nice sharp corners. But we will at some point do an online class for making shirts because there's lots of techniques that you can use. French scenes, burrito techniques for doing the yolks, all those sort of things. So. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, tropical fabric. Isn't it nice to make something in a tropical fabric at this time of year? What Apparently the uh, Frida Kahlo fabric, uh, Fabric Godmother has it. And also uh, Fabrics Galore. Oh. Fabrics Galore have it as well. I think Wendy's made it or made something already in Frida Kahlo. <laughs> there were lots of undercolour shows. I didn't think some of their... They kept saying that the corners were turned nicely. And nice chest. They were. <laughs> I didn't think there were any sharp corners. On I mean, what shirts. with men on the sewing bee and Tom Hardy telling us bedtime stories, this week's been really fun. <laughs> I, I think we're okay. <laughs> Emma was liking the curly hair Italian. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're with you on that one. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good episode this week. I think they're. I think also. I think the um, chemistry between Esme and and Joe and Patrick is really good as well. I think that's. Uh, it's really funny. It looks like it's going to be quite good next week with the children's clothes as well. More about techniques for us on that one. Although there's lots of ladies making, lots of ladies making children's clothes at the moment, isn't there? So, um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it this week. I thought there was some really nice, some really nice things. While we're talking about McCall's patterns, actually, I've just found out that McCall's Patterns, um, on their American site, which is McCall.com, uh, you can buy McCall's and Butterick Patterns in a digital format. So you can buy their PDFs and get them printed at home. So um, if you like um, McCall's and Butterick Patterns, there's a way of getting them digital now. And I've just found that out this morning, actually. So worth having a look on their site. But that is the American site, McCall.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can see. I'm hoping they'll do some Vogue ones at some point. But uh, yeah, nice to know. That McCall's they're... have upped their game recently. I do, yeah. I actually patterns. really like McCall's patterns. There's some really good ones. So have a look at their website um, for that as well. Uh, yeah, there were no burritos and no sharp corners on those, Wendy. Um, oh, but Claire's saying, now Claire, Claire on the sewing bee, who's the lady who wears all the vintage stuff, um, Oh yes, Claire. Uh, Claire, no, you know Claire Bradley, don't you? Yeah. So that's yeah, beautiful dress. Wendy's saying, "How can you get on the sewing bee and not know how to do a concealed zip?" Well, <laughs> for all those ladies on the sewing bee who <laughs> who don't know, I thought I'd demo a concealed zip today. Actually, um, good timing, Wendy. Yeah, it was very it's good. Almost timing. like we paid you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Marion. How are you? Thanks for popping by. Um, I thought I'd show you how to do a concealed zip today because there's lots of little tips. Um, oh yeah, Matt, uh, Victoria's talking about McCall's patterns being really good as well. So uh, yeah, they're definitely up their game. If you, you'll notice that actually in the Sew Today magazine. If you get Sew Today magazine, you can see a lot of really lovely... Um, yeah, they should, have used the pool, they should have used the pool corner. Um, one of them used a loop turner to turn yeah. out her corner i was shocked that was very strange yeah <laughs> it does work doesn't it Catherine? um emma it's on our youtube channel it's called yeah. perfect corner yeah if you have a look on youtube it's there i could demo it but i'm i'm, I'm not set up for pulled corners today <laughs> i could do it but um i'm going to show you how to do a concealed zip
Yeah, Sally, it would be nice if they did some techniques. I think they might do, um, there's so many sewers at the moment, there's still 11 or so sewers, isn't there, in it? So they might do some more chat about techniques as they go through. Um, but, uh, yeah, at the moment, they're just, it's literally just the looking what they're doing, isn't it? So, invisible zip, concealed zip. This is my invisible zip sample. You probably can't see it, and that's what it should be like if you can't see it. Um, so that's the invisible zip and it should run straight into the seam below it so you can't see where the zip finishes and the seam starts and also I put a little facing on the top here so I was going to show you how to do a neat way of doing that as well so oh, let me get my samples up and Amy might even do some fancy ah, camera work <laughs> whenever you're putting a zip into a garment um, always uh, stabilize the area where ooh, there's a tripod coming. Well, yeah, we're just moving. <laughs> um, always stabilize the area where the zip's going to go. Uh, so I use strips of woven interfacing. I also have a basket of these strips ready cut, so that when I'm going to put a zip in, these um, these are ready cut. So stabilize both pieces of fabric with a um, piece of interfacing, uh, and then I neaten the edges, and I've done that on the overlocker. And you're going to be tacking the seam and I tack by hand so I've got my normal tacking thread um oh that's better uh got my tacking thread and I've actually drawn a line with a friction pen one and a half centimeters from the edge so whatever the seam allowance is you need to draw a line and then you're going to tack along that line and I like to do it by hand uh, I know some people do this by machine but I just find it may take a little bit longer to go in but um it pulls out really quickly so just tack your seam allowance along here and then once you've done that you're going to press your seam open so the the interfacing strip needs to be about an inch longer than your zip and um, about I know, about an inch wide and then tack along that seam you only need to tack along the bit that's been interfaced you don't need to do it all the way down so once you've done that you're then going to press it open here so press your seam open and then you're going to lay your zip onto the seam the top of your zip here so the zip pull should be one and a half centimeters from the top of your um, fabric and that's allowing for your facing or your waistband to go on so don't rely on the, the tape at the top of the zip being the right length always measure from the top down that should be one and a half centimeters obviously if your seam allowance is one and a half centimeters and then center your zip face down so um i was just going to grab a concealed zip out of the drawer actually because i've already stuck this one on just to quickly show you a concealed zip here the, you'll know a concealed zip because the tag is on one side and the teeth are on the other side so this is the right side of the zip and it used to be that any zip that had this tag was a concealed zip uh, but now I've noticed that some normal zips have this tag so just check that the teeth are on the other side uh, and these you can get these into several different lengths but they're really easy to cut to size just measure down the length you want and sew over the bottom and then you can just cut the excess off when you're buying a concealed zip always buy it at least an inch longer than the gap your the gap you need so if you've got an eight inch gap you need to buy a nine inch zip or you need to cut a nine inch zip because we don't sew all the way to the bottom so once you've got your zip you've pressed your seam open lay the zip onto the seam making sure it's nice and centered and then pin and tack it to the seam allowance only on both sides so you're not going all the way through you're just pinning and tacking it to the seam allowance only and again I like to do that by hand because it comes out nice and easily once you've done that, take out the original tacking that's holding the seam together. And that should come out nice and easily. Now I've said it will. <laughs> so take out the tacking that's holding the seam together. Just cut that double stitch that I did. I always do a double stitch at the beginning and the end so that it doesn't come apart. Okay. and then you're going to open your zip so turn it over and open the zip 
So at the moment, it doesn't look very invisible. You see? Okay. So it's all tacked in. Now, the, when you want to sew, when you sew an invisible zip in, you want to, to stitch behind the teeth. So if you turn the zip out, you want to be standing the teeth up and stitching behind here. And to be able to do that, you need to use an invisible zip foot. This is the Janome one. I really like the Janome one because it's got the two little grooves underneath. Uh, and it's got this post on the front there, which helps the teeth to stand up. So what you're going to do when it's on the machine is stand the teeth up and put the uh, put the teeth of the zip in the groove on the left hand side and then all you're doing is just slightly standing the teeth up as you're going down. Now you can do a reverse at the top here and then you'll go all the way down as far as you can. And when you get to the bottom, just go as far as you can. Uh, when you get to the bottom here, don't, I don't like to do a reverse here because I'm always con I'm concerned about stitching back over the teeth. So if your machine does a locking stitch, you can do that. Otherwise, come off and leave long enough tails to be able to tie a knot. So I'm going to do that on the machine now. I'm going to take the um, zigzag foot off and put the invisible zip foot on. So I'm standing the teeth up and putting them in the groove on the left hand side here. Now sometimes, just move my tacking stitch the other way, sometimes you get a little bit of plastic at the top of your zip, in which case you might need to ease it over a little bit. I'm going to do a reverse at the top and then I'm just going to come down and I'm just slightly standing the teeth up as I go down. This machine I can do a locking stitch. Is that Victoria's grey linen? Oh, I can't remember where I got this linen from, very possibly will be. Uh, my machine does a thread cut as well so I'm just using that. And then for the other side you have the fabric the right way up, fabric the right way up or garment the right way up and then turn the zip out and again, stand the teeth up this side. This time they're going in the groove on the other side. I'm just going to lift the foot so it goes in the groove on the other side. Hold on to my threads for the first couple of stitches. Reverse. And then I'm just standing the teeth up as they go through. little post on the foot really helps the teeth to stand up. Go down as far as I can, do a locking stitch. And cut the thread. So let's have a little look and see if this is invisible. Hopefully. Look at that, a nice invisible zip. So once you're happy with the, um, the nice invisible zip there, you can turn it over and take out the tacking stitches that are holding the zip on. And I'm going to show you how to finish the seam below. So let's just take out these tacking stitches. Am I making sense so far? I hope so. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gone very quiet. They're watching. Good, good, good. I know a lot of you see me do this before, but I thought it'd be a nice thing to do. I always need a refresher. I can never yeah. remember. And look, I've got notes that go with this, so a lot of people have their notes out on the table when they're doing their zips. This is my, I always pin and tack an invisible zip. I mean, it's particularly good when you're doing, you've got something that's got a waist seam. Um, you know, where you've got to try and keep the seams matching at the waist. Okay, so I've taken out my tacking stitches and now we need to finish the seam below the zip. So this bit here. So I'm going to bring my fabrics together here. And what we want to do is start stitching where we finish stitching. So I don't know if you can see that. Amy's getting a fancy camera. Hold it, so will you just stop? <laughs> 
So I should have done my contrast straight, shouldn't I, really? Yeah. But that's where I finished stitching. So that's where I want to start stitching. I'm going to put a pin in there and make sure it comes out in the right place on the other side. There. And that's just my holding pin. So now I'm just going to pin the edges together, keeping the bottom of the zip out of the way. <laughs> Victoria says it wants concentrating. <laughs> you can keep this, you see, because it'll be on my face on the Facebook page for eternity. <laughs> we'll do a YouTube version. Yeah, as well. we will do a YouTube as well. Well, we'll, and we'll make it. It'll be part of my online class as well. So when we do, we do a zips class for the sample portfolio. I do zips and more zips. So the first zips includes this one, a trouser zip, and an exposed teeth zip. And then the more zips does a lap zip, a, um, a a couture zip, so a, which is half half on the machine and half by hand, and then a, a zip that's done completely by hand. So particularly good when you're working with things like Linton Tweed, actually. So we want to start stitching here, and then we're going to want to stitch along our seam here. To be able to get the needle right in here, we're going to go back to using a traditional zipper foot like this one here. So most of you will have this type of zipper foot with your machine. And when you put the zip, zipper foot on your machine, it would line up sort of like this at the edge. So what I'm gonna do is move the needle over so it's level with the edge of the foot. So I'm gonna do that now, put this on the machine. This is why I was saying about if you're thinking of upgrading your machine, being able to move the needle left and right is really important. So when you use these machine, these feet, always think about putting the foot on the machine <clears throat> so that the, the majority of the foot is away from the zip. So the zip is here and the big part of the foot is away from it. So I'm putting the, putting the fabric underneath, making sure the zip's out of the way and everything's nice and smooth. And if I bring this over, I don't know if you can see, but if I just went down now, the needle would be quite far away from where that pin is. So I'm going to move the needle over on this machine, 3.5 is the middle. So if I go up to 7, the needle is now all the way to the right. And now when I lower that needle, it goes right in where that pin is. So I can take this pin out. Again, double check that everything's nice and smooth. Lower the foot. Now my machine, like I said, does a locking stitch. If yours doesn't, don't do a reverse, just leave your threads and um, you can tie a knot later. And then you're going to come forward whoops, and <laughs> stitch your seam. Now when your seam is, when your foot's out to the right like this, it can feel a little bit unstable. So what I tend to do is just stitch to the end of the interfacing and then come out and then re reset my machine with my normal foot to stitch the rest of the seam. So I won't do that bit now because I want to show you that this has all worked. If I turn this over now, you can see that you can't see where the zip finishes and the seam starts. So if I undo it, there we go, and that's where the zip finishes and the seam starts. So some people on the sewing bee this week, they had trouble with that little bit there. Um, oh, it's gone off my Facebook page. Um, Uh, on different zips, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's the best way I find for doing that bit below the zip there. The last thing you want to do, I'm just going to turn this over again, the very last thing, let me just get some of these pins out of the way, um, very last thing to do is you'll see that the bottom of this zip is not attached here. So what I like to do is um, to put the needle back to the middle, so I'm going back to 3.5, and I'm going to put the foot onto the other side. And I'm just going to stitch the edge of the zip tape. I'm going to start just below the top here. You really only need to do this bottom bit, but I quite like to do it all the way down. Just stitch the edge of the zip tape to the seam allowance all the way down, making sure this is nice and straight at the bottom. reverse the bottom and then you can go back up the other side and that just secures everything in place you don't 
might need to go all the way past the zip pull because um, your waistband or facing will be secure in that bit. So you really only need to come to just there. There we go. And that's just all held in place now. Perfect. So that's a really nice um, way to do an invisible zip. It's my favourite way. It's what I always recommend and I teach in my classes. Um, oh, morning, Dan. Waving from Harrogate. <laughs> Oops. Oh, oh, I know sorry. what it is. It's because you touched the I screen. I hit one. it. Sorry. That's all right. Um, um, okay. So I just wanted to show you quickly how to finish the top with a facing. Um, when you put a facing on, this is my little piece of fabric that I'm going to use for my facing. Uh, generally, when you're putting a facing on the oh, top... Oh, Wendy says, would you normally do a reverse stitch? Uh, reverse. When which part, Wendy? When I'm when I'm doing the when I'm stitching to the facing, maybe stitching the this bit. I do a reverse on this because it's yeah because it's holding it in place. Uh, the only place I wouldn't do a reverse is this bit underneath here because you might stitch back over your beautiful stitching you've done for your zip. So either do a locking stitch or leave enough thread to tie a knot. So but here these bits you could do reverse top and bottom. Um, so for a facing. So generally with a facing, when you're putting a facing on, you would fold the facing back so it's level with your um, your zip here and stitch across the top. I'll just put a pin in to show you what happens when you do that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. So if you stitch across the top with it like that, then you fold that down. It gets very lumpy and you see all these bits of interface, these bits of seam allowance here. So my little tip for doing that would be, again, fold your facing like this, but then fold the zip over the top like that. Okay, so what happens when you do that? I'm just going to change my foot back and stitch that. Going to put my normal foot back on and I'm just going to stitch across the top so I can show you what happens when you do that. So this is why you need to be really accurate with the first bit that you do when you, um, oh just chucked a pin on the floor sorry, um, <laughs> it's fatal in this house with pins on the floor. They are everywhere. Um, that's why you have to be really accurate at the beginning with making sure the top of your zip was one and a half centimetres from the top of your facing. So go right over the top. Like that. And now I'm going to trim off the corner. Victoria's saying, can you do it with bulky fabrics too? Yeah, I don't see why not. I'm going to cut that off there. And now when you pull this through, now what happens is the zip facing just sits nicely next to your zip like that and all the seam allowances are tucked inside. I hope that made sense there. So what you would what you now would do is your understitching as well and then that would be perfectly finished. And that's my favourite way of finishing a facing on a um, concealed zip. You can't do that if it's lined unfortunately but if it's an unlined one you can uh, that's a really nice way of doing it. So I hope that was helpful. It's my little demo done today. I made a right old mess on the table here. <laughs> so I don't even know if you've got any questions on that or on concealed zips or anything like that because uh, they're my favourite things to do. My tea hasn't quite got cold. <laughs> oh good, I'm glad it all made sense. Thank you Barbara, thank you Janet. So yeah, visible zips, not so scary. I would recommend getting that um, Janome foot though, if your machine can take a Janome. Most machines, I think even the brother have now upgraded their foot to have that little post uh, underneath as well. So um, yeah, do invest in a, an invisible zip foot. So that's my demo done. Amy's gonna come and say hello now. Come on, Amy. I will. And say Ooh. hello and you can tell everyone what you've Hello. What you're wearing today? Uh, today, uh, this is the Makers Atelier asymmetric dress, asymmetric gather dress. I think it's called. Yeah. Um, so it's super simple to make. It's got um, some wide elastic in here and here and in the back. Uh, and my little hack was just to change the sleeves. It was supposed to have a sleeve that finished here with elastic, but for me that was quite unflattering. So I just took it shorter. 
Um, oh, Jilly met me. Oh, Jilly did my concealed zipper Harrogate. So you've so tried you know. it then. <laughs> <laughs> and Claire's going to try it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, give it a go this week. Do a sample. It doesn't hurt to do a sample. Oh, Pat's always been scared of invisible zips, but not, not now. now. You can <laughs> do it now. That's um, good. Yes, yeah. Margaret. Yeah, I think Victoria's made this dress as well, hasn't she? Victoria's and James made it. Made it. Yeah. It's a really good pattern. It's a nice pattern. This is uh, denim from Bloomsbury Square. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it yeah. was quite an easy make, wasn't it? Was it was really easy, yeah. Mm. Less than a day. And I think, made, um, made I think on uh, Frances' blog, she's done a, a version where you do drawstrings, so elastic, which is quite mm -hmm. nice as well, on, on sort of dresses, I thought. Yes, I like it. Yeah. So, um, oh, that's good. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> that's good. Mm. Uh, so what else have you been up to this week? You've been mm. busy this week. Nice shape on you, Amy. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, it is. It's mm -hmm. a really flattering shape, isn't mm. it? Uh, what have I been up to this week? I have done no sewing this week. I'm very behind mm. uh, because I've been busy writing blogs mm. for Bloomsbury Square, which uh, you will get today, Victoria, I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> just got yeah, to finish some photos. I just need to do some photos, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, this is, it is slightly stretchy, but it's denim. It's really yeah. lightweight mm. denim uh, with a tiny little stretch. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, and it doesn't need to be stretched at no, all. It just has to be cotton. Yeah, um, it's... Victoria made it in crepe, I think. So yes, mm. I think so. Mm. Uh, so been writing yes, so that's what I've been doing. I did a blog about this one, yeah. and I've also done palazzo pants, mm -hmm. and I've done raw uh, boiled wool coats, and what else? The Q I dress, the Nina Lee. Oh, dress. the Nina Lee Q mm. dress mm. is also done. So um, yes, That'll keep be... your eyes peeled for those on the Bloomsbury website. Uh, and I've got lots more in the bag because I realised just how much. I have made in the past year. Probably in, square, yeah, right? probably square. <laughs> so it's <laughs> the same, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what I've been doing this week. Mm. Um, so I'm going to be sewing this afternoon, and well, I'm hoping the sun comes back out. So mm. I need to take some photos of all of these yeah. things for the blog. But otherwise, I'm back to sewing because I haven't done any, and I miss it. You do your other Sienna jacket, don't you? I do. Yeah. Yes, I need to do my other Sienna, so then I can blog about that. Yeah. Because I'm now a blogger. <laughs> <laughs> you are officially official oh yeah. susan said it looks good as well thanks susan it's a really nice dress yeah, yeah i really, really like nice. it i was a bit concerned because i wear it with little white trainers and the first time i wore it i thought i looked a bit like a nurse so i couldn't yeah. put scrubs on but <laughs> it's quite appropriate now. it's quite appropriate yeah yeah uh yes i like it now uh linda says oh, thanks for the refreshing to do in harrogate as well i love doing the harrogate show i have to say it's a really good show, isn't it? Lovely people. Yeah. Well, all the shows, it's a great way of meeting, meeting lots of lovely people. Mm. So. so, so also this week, so this week we are mm. going to do YouTube uh, on masks. Mm. We're going to do a little one face cover things. Face covers. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we thought we would do the Makers Atelier Origami Top as a free YouTube tutorial. Yeah, we're we gonna do probably that look at that pattern, so we thought we'd do that as a little quick top a to make. A little quick, yep, tutorial. Um, we might need to do the invisible zip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll so do that a again. permanent one on YouTube. Yeah. Yes, but that's what we're gonna do, some filming, and then filming more couture jacket. Yes, that's on Monday, so we're up to all buttons and buttonholes this week, and trim, so that's what we're gonna be doing Exciting. this week. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be even more bits of lint and work between There will. Yeah. <laughs> Mum was using my sewing desk because it was the machine was threaded up for her jacket. Yeah, and uh, yes, my um, there's little bits of lint and all over my stash, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when will the masks be? They'll be, well, we'll, we might try and film it this afternoon or tomorrow yeah. morning. So it'll be up, it'll definitely be up by tomorrow on the YouTube channel. Um, Oh, yes, that's right, Julie. The Harrogate uh, Conference Centre is now Nightingale Hospital, isn't it? Yes. So who knows if there'll be any shows this year, but they're, mm. they're being put to much better use. It's such a good conference centre, that one, isn't it? It's right in the centre of town, so it must be a really good place to have a, a hospital as well. So, yeah, that's really good. Mm. So, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. I've got, obviously, I've got to go to Midhurst this afternoon and sort out all these orders now. So, yeah, um, I'll get your orders in now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going Before up two o'clock. Yeah. Um, and uh, then when I get back, we'll do some more um, filming. We'll probably do the mask because I've got that all ready and uh, the face cover and uh, the origami top later. And then all the other ones we've got on our list. So, we've got busy week as Very. usual. Um, 
lots of ideas coming up. It's really, it's been really great uh, uh, keeping in contact with everybody um, and hearing about what you're doing. And like I said, if you ever have any questions, you can always either book a one to one or just you know send me an email. I think I sorted out um, Suzanne's overlocker on <laughs> on the Midhurst Sewers page this week. <laughs> we did little, we were doing video backwards and forwards things. So mm -hmm. yes, anything. I, I hate to think that you're at home and you've got stuck. That would be no good at all. Uh, and maybe we'll do some. Um, Oh, the London one's being shot, so that's good. That's good. that's good news, isn't it? That means that we didn't, yeah, we've all us all our staying at home has worked, which is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Stay home and sew. Yeah. So that's great. So that's um question about the canvas, please. Oh, go on, Sally. What do you want to know? That was for the fire away. That was for the <laughs> that was for the in the blazer for the plastrum. Is that what you're talking about? I'm intrigued now. <laughs> oh, I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just waiting you can always email me Sally yeah. <laughs> so the, in the in the tailoring class in the in the shoulder of a does it get used to the fabric it does with a piece you use a piece of lightweight fusible interfacing over the top um yeah so you cut the canvas and the lightweight interfacing from the same pattern piece that you've made you trim off the seam allowances on the on the canvas and then you can use the lightweight interfacing to fuse it on. It's did, in the video. We did film it. It is in the we video. It. <laughs> yeah, it does. You use the lightweight interfacing to fuse it on because the canvas itself is not fusible. So ah. there you go. There we go. So I'm glad we sorted that one out. Yeah, Wendy said we've got to keep staying at home. Yes, we have. Keep staying at home and keep sewing. Keep in touch. Let us know what you're doing. I quite um, like the hashtag isolation. Isolation, yeah, yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Stay home and sew. Um, <laughs> it's magic. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so sadly new ship numbers today. Make sure you cut those canvas bits on the bias as well. Sorry for those of you that aren't doing the <laughs> that aren't doing the blazer. If you do the blazer, <laughs> <laughs> you will understand. The plaster is the piece of chest canvas that you put into here, which supports the front of the blazer, so it stops it collapsing. Particularly good on ladies' blazers where we've got having handbags and things on our shoulders. So it's a nice bit of speed tailoring that you do um, into the front of your jacket when you're doing. Um, Oh yes, me made May. Oh, I forgot May. to mention that me made May. Yes, so in in during May, there's you know Instagram have these lots of little challenges that go on. But every May, um, there's a company called I think it's at Sozo Blog who started the challenge where every day you wear something that you've made and you take a photograph and you tag me made May and you're supposed to do something every day. And I forgot to do it yesterday. So we'll have to do two today. Okay. Um, yeah. So every day, take a photograph of yourself wearing something you've made. Uh, tag hashtag me made may and do um do at Claire's threads as well then I'll know that <laughs> you've done it uh, and we can have a little look and see what everyone's been wearing so I'm sure we've all got quite a nice um selection of um so uh, do we have 31 things oh <laughs> <laughs> oh we just have to keep making yes if not we have to make some more yeah so yes do me made may um oh thank you Catherine Catherine's doing the blazer as well She's binge she watched binge it. <laughs> and now I go back and watch it again. It's always good. It's like we always say when you're doing a pattern, read all the instructions first and then go back and, and do it. So, yeah, same with the videos. Yeah, so try, uh, have a look, Lisa, if, you, if you've got Instagram, do hashtag me made May. Sally's doing it. I've seen t two of Sally's lovely things that she's done. You're on it from the 1st of May. I completely forgot. I did it last year and the year before. Um, coats as well. Oh, for the plastrum. Yeah, oh. plastrum's really good in a coat if you're doing a wool coat because it supports the shoulders. And the sleeve wrap as well, something else to, to do as well. <laughs> Just have to do the blazer work, yeah. and then all of this will it's make sense. Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> so I really enjoyed catching up with you all this week. Um, do keep in touch. We'll be back again next Saturday. So let me know if there's any little demos that you'd like to do. Um, you could show your masks. Oh yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll 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 save that for YouTube. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's the. Yeah. My, I don't know where mine is. I made oh, one yeah, in like a paisley did. fabric. You We've got lots of. It's a good way of using up all your things. Um, just put the blazer in a bag. <laughs> oh yes, I'll put your yes. I'll I'll get your blazer. Yes. So Wendy did the blazer workshop last year, and she made the Jessica blazer, but left it in the sewing room before lockdown. So um, I'll put it in a bag for you. Uh, and then you can wear it <laughs> for me no I also was using the timer yesterday, Wendy, to try and get photos. But mm. Doing the timer and then doing one photo, running, doing it, and then it's rubbish. 
is really time consuming yeah. <laughs> because every time you need a photo you need to take at least 20 so yeah i'll take pictures for okay thanks yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got our new toy to play with our kibbo to yeah we've got minutes. some new gadgets for taking yeah. photos yeah so that's it from us today i think isn't it i think, I think, I think, so. I think we've run through my whole list we did the nicole's thing didn't we yeah we did um, yeah, so um, have a great week, everybody. And uh, don't forget to watch the Sewing Bee on Wednesday. We'll have a chat about that again next week. And let me know any demos you'd like me to do. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, and we'll catch up with you again next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every week. Otherwise, I'll just sit here smiling and waving for 10 minutes. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us again this week, everybody. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.